Hello YouTube, Hiker Daniel here. And when you play Zelda, do you ever just wish that your friend was there with you in the game so he could screw you over and steal your rupees? Well, if so, I got the game for you. The Legend of Zelda Four Swords Anniversary Edition for the DSi and Nintendo 3DS. And the best thing is, it's free. For, in my opinion, one of the only good multiplayer Zelda games, this game has gotten into obscurity really quickly, which is probably due to it being a time-limited free download back in 2011. This was due to the 25th anniversary of the Zelda franchise and because of that Nintendo decided to port the original Game Boy Advance game, The Legend of Zelda 4 Swords, to the DSi and 3DS due through the eShop. This version was dubbed the Anniversary Edition. This download was only available for a limited time from late September 2011 until February 2012 and later for 4 more days somewhere in 2014 in the US due to the release of Link Between Worlds. Back then this was a pretty big deal, a free Zelda game available for all DSi and 3DS owners. And it had a commercial featuring the late Robin Williams and his daughter Zelda Williams, who he had named after the princess, playing the game. That was pretty cool and I wish that he was still here to make more commercials like that, because I really enjoyed the one. The game itself was essentially a port of the Game Boy Advance game, Four Swords, which was bundled as an, in as an extra with the GBA port of A Link to the Past. Now, that game in itself is pretty obscure, it was a multiplayer top-down Zelda game that supported up to 4 players, but multiplayer was obligatory, meaning that you needed to find another Game Boy Advance owner with a Link cable and a cartridge for a Link to the Past plus 4 Sword Adventures, and then you'll be able to play 4 Sword Adventures. That was a huge entry barrier. Now, this made the original game an enormous pain to play, with a huge entry barrier. I dare to doubt that this is probably one of the least played Zelda games to this day due to this entry barrier. Now, the port fixes a lot of this. They made the entry barrier free by making the game a free download for all system owners. They also made use of the DSi's and 3DS wireless capabilities by removing the need for a link cable. This way the game could be played with basically anyone who had a 3DS or DSi and access to the internet. Now, next to fixing annoyances like this, the game adds a ton of extra features like extra levels and a single player mode for those out there that want to play the game but don't want to suffer a social interaction. Now, this single player mode isn't ideal, it's a bit clunky, but we'll get to that in a bit. These days it's a rarity to find this game, or anyone playing it out in the wild. There are no ROMs of the game online that I could find, and there are no emulators that support DSiWare in a stable way, making this game a real rarity. Now, the only way to play this game these days is if you once had it on the 3DS, and then you can re-download it, if you own it, or if you have it installed on your 3DS or DSi and never deinstalled it. Unfortunately, if you deleted it from your DSi, there is no way to re-download it, as the DSi shop has been closed for quite a while now. So, most DSi's don't have it on it anymore and there's no way to get it back. And back then, not many people owned a 3DS yet, so the chance of actually finding a system that has the game on it, on or multiple systems to play it with friends, is a real rarity. Especially here in Europe, where the game was never made available after its initial, initial release. And even in the US, those were only 4 days, and not everyone they downloaded it. Now, I'm a very lucky person, as I have never deleted it from my 3DS, so still have it, and back in the day I asked my sister to install it on my DSi. That way I can still play this game now, because I have two systems that have the game on it. Although only with two players, but it's still quite the experience. As I said before, this game itself is essentially just the original Game Boy Advance game, plus some cool new extras. The game's story is that an ancient evil, Vati, was locked inside the Four Sword, with Princess Zelda when the, felt the seal waning. So she and Link went to check it out, and oh no, Vati has escaped and kidnapped Zelda to be his bride that would marry him to celebrate his return. Link gets the mission to stop Vati, and as he touches the Four Sword, he splits into four Links. Together, they will try to stop Vati. The game has all the original levels for you to explore, which have all randomly generated layouts to encourage replay. You have the intro level, the Chambers of Insight, then there's the Sea of Trees, the Talus Cave and the Death Mountain. When you cleared all the levels and collected all the keys that you get at all the levels, the doors to Vati's Palace, the Palace of Winds, opens up. Then at the end of the level you battle Vati and you and your friends will have saved the world. Now after defeating Vati an exclusive level to the Anniversary Edition will come be available. The Realm of Memories. In it you can obtain the Master Sword by clearing the entire stage. The stage itself consists out of different levels that are based off levels from previous top-down 2D Zelda games, like the original Legend of Zelda and Link's Awakening. The game even changes aesthetic for the extra nostalgia feel, and I think that's really cool. 
Now, while the levels of the Realm of Memories are in terms of gameplay nothing special compared to the original levels in the game, adding them is a really cool feature and I really appreciate them adding it. The other added stage is the Heroes Trial. In it you have to go through compilations of the original levels, now in dark settings and now ending in a level of Vati's Palace, also in a darker setting. At the end of the Heroes Trial mode you unlock the Sword Spin that you can now use at any point in the game. This mode can be unlocked prior to finishing the game by collecting enough rupees or hero medals. You get these hero medals by being the best player in terms of rupees after completing a multiplayer level. The best link of the bunch is then awarded a medal. Another cool feature is that each player has their own progression rate, while you can still play the levels with each other. For example, I could have the Master Sword and the Sword Spin and play with my friend who only has just started. Now, while this game is already relatively short, there is a lot of fun to be had. To complete the main story, plus the extras, I needed about 8 hours, a bit longer than the online average according to how long to beat. Now, if you stretch it a bit, then the complete entire game could draw you about 20 hours according to how long to beat, but that's still a pretty short Zelda game. But hey, for a free game, it's really fun, and the fact that the dungeons are randomly generated makes it so that there's a lot of replayability for with friends. And the game is made in such a way that screwing around in it with friends and having fun is one of the main staples of the game. So what if you're not lucky and you only have one device with the game or you just haste social interaction? Well then there's the single player mode. I want to argue that the single player mode is by, by far the worst way to experience this game. But for some of us it's the only way to experience this game. If you ever experience it at all. The single player is clunky and it really feels like the game is completely designed around multiplayer and the single player just feels as if it's shoehorned in. The levels are harder this way and basically just more annoying to complete as you need to switch controls between the two links. The levels aren't adapted at all to function for single player so a puzzle for multiplayer still requires multiple characters. They just made it so that you can control two links by switching and the things you can't do by switching because there are simultaneous actions needed. They just have you, well, fight alongside an NPC. And that's just really lame in my opinion. But then again, that's my opinion. It's completely playable, just far from ideal. But if you get past the clunky controls in the dumb CPU, even the single player can provide you with a fun experience. It's just not my preferred way to play the game. And that is a quick overview of the history and gameplay of The Legend of Zelda 4 Swords Anniversary Edition. I hope you liked this video enough to stay around for the next one uh, or watch one of my previous ones and if not, the time we had here was nice. Now I need to go because I spotted, spotted a sweet looking level 5 onyx on the way here and I need to go and catch it for my collection. So, see ya!